Hey, kiddos. Uh, today we are going to talk about something called phase diagrams. And a phase diagram is simply a graphical representation um, of the physical states and we're talking solid, liquid, or gas, of a substance at different temperatures and pressure. So let's take a look at the phase diagram for water. A couple of important things I want to mention here. Um, on the y-axis, it is labeled pressure in atmospheres. And one atmosphere is what we call standard atmospheric pressure. It's what the atmospheric pressure is on a typical day at sea level. The y-axis is labeled as temperature in degrees Celsius. So an important point here occurs right here on my graph where it says normal freezing point. Now, normal freezing point is the temperature where the solid and the liquid are in equilibrium at one atmosphere of pressure. So, on my phase diagram, this line segment right here from A to D represents the temperatures and pressures when water is in equilibrium, when liquid water is in equilibrium with solid water. To the left side of this line, we have the solid phase. To the right side of this line, we have the liquid phase. So, at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure, we call that normal pressure, the solid and the liquid are in equilibrium at that temperature. And so water will either begin to freeze or melt. It's in equilibrium. Both are happening at the same rate. Now, along with normal freezing, we also have normal boiling point. Now, the normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. That's where the vapor pressure of the liquid equals atmospheric pressure at 100 degrees Celsius. So we say normal because that is one atmosphere of pressure. And water will normally boil at 100 degrees Celsius when the atmospheric pressure is one, a typical day at sea level. So we have normal freezing and normal boiling points. We also have something here at point A that's called the triple point. The triple point, and let's go ahead and define that for us down here at the bottom, is the temperature and pressure when all three phases of a substance are in equilibrium. So for water, that triple point is at a temperature of 0 0.01 Celsius, just barely, barely, barely above its freezing point, and an extremely low pressure, 0 0.006 atmospheres. That will be the temperature and pressure where all, freeze, all three phases, the solid, liquid, and gas phase, are in equilibrium. Now, to the right of this line segment here, A to E, is the gas or vapor phase of the substance. So, we can use this phase diagram for water to determine the physical state of water at a particular temperature and pressure. So if we're at a temperature of, let's say, 50 degrees Celsius and a pressure of, I don't know, 1.5 atmospheres, we'll put us right here on our phase diagram, you would see that water would be in its liquid phase at that temperature and pressure. If I raised the temperature without raising the pressure, the phase change I would go through, raising the temperature without raising the pressure, would be liquid to gas. 
water would boil if I raised the temperature to a high enough temperature. And it's difficult to read that on this graph, but it would be that point at that high pressure. Let's take another temperature and pressure. Let's say I am at, I don't know, 75 degrees Celsius. I'll put this right here on my x-axis. And let's say one half of an atmosphere is right there. So at 75 degrees Celsius and one half of an atmosphere, it looks like at that temperature, 75 Celsius and one half of an atmosphere, water would be a gas. If I raised the pressure without changing the temperature, raise the pressure without changing the temperature, wouldn't water go from the gas to the liquid phase first? Wouldn't it condense? So this is how we use a phase diagram. There are a couple of other points right here. This point right here is called a critical point. This represents the temperature above which no amount of pressure can liquefy my gas. So in other words, the line becomes straight, has a slope of zero at, at this point, and it begins to come, become vertical. So once I get to this temperature for water, above 373.99 degrees, no amount of pressure can liquefy my gas. So if I'm at this temperature and pressure, water will be in the gas phase. If I raise the pressure, without raising the temperature, it will stay in the gas phase. No amount of pressure will liquefy the gas at that critical point. Now, it is possible to liquefy a gas at that temperature, and that's called the critical pressure. So we can liquefy water at 373.99, but we need to apply a whole bunch of pressure. Now, I think something's interesting about water's phase diagram. Notice what happens to the volume of water when it freezes. Most of us know that water expands when it freezes. For all intents and purposes, this is the only substance that will expand when it freezes. Take a look at the phase diagram for water. Let's say I am at, I don't know, let's say that this is negative 5 degrees Celsius, and I am at one atmosphere of pressure. What if I raise the pressure? If I raise the pressure, doesn't water go from the solid phase to the liquid phase? Doesn't it melt at negative five degrees Celsius when I raise the pressure? The reason for that is because liquid water has a smaller volume. And when you raise the pressure, the substance is pushed towards its smaller volume, which for water is the liquid phase. You'll notice that the slope of the line segment AD is negative. Water, for all intents and purposes, is the only substance that has a negative solid to liquid line. That means that when the, when the liquid freezes, it will expand. Remember, if you increase the pressure without changing the temperature, it will end up going to the liquid phase. It will end up melting at a higher pressure because it has a smaller volume. Um, it would like to go to a smaller volume at that higher pressure. Now, this is very unique, like I said. For instance, lakes and rivers freeze on top first. Why do they do that? Well, because water expands when it freezes. So its density decreases. It becomes less dense. The mass is the same, but it's expanding. So that means ice will float on liquid water. And so lakes and rivers will freeze on top first. That will provide an insulated barrier for the water beneath, and the water beneath will not freeze. This property is quite unique. Water is the only common substance that does this. Imagine if it didn't. In other words, what if water contracted when it froze? Then it would become more dense, wouldn't it? 
and then lakes and rivers would freeze from the bottom up. And all aquatic life living in that lake or river would end up dying every winter when that lake or river froze over. So water is very unique in that it expands when it freezes. Almost all other substances, in fact, for all intents and purposes, all other substances end up contracting when they freeze, but water expands. All right. Um, in our next video, we are going to do some practice phase diagram questions, going over the things we discussed today. Okay? See you soon. Bye-bye.